Hey everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at how to use squeeze theorem. So I'm assuming that you already have the definition of squeeze theorem and you've already been introduced to the concept because I want to get right into just how to apply it and solve this question. So we're given a limit that looks something like this. It's very ugly and that should be the first step that you're probably going to need to use some sort of technique that you've learned that's uh, aside from one of like the easier methods where you divide out the highest degree or any other easy methods that you might have learned. So something super ugly that's got trig functions, exponentials, and you've got no idea how to approach it, immediately we think, okay, this is probably gonna use either squeeze theorem or some other sort of uh, like special rule or technique that you've learned in the course. So let's let's think, uh, you know, let's try to use this using squeeze. Let's try to solve this using squeeze theorem. And I think that the biggest indicator of this is the fact that we've got a trig function with something ugly on the inside. Um, so we'll start with the trig function, and this the trig function is always like a great way to start with using squeeze theorem because we get an inequality right away. So we know that cosine of anything is going to be between negative 1 and 1, right? That is the range of cosine. And it doesn't matter what is being plugged in, right? It's always going to spit out a result that's between negative 1 and 1. So let's do, we'll start that cosine of 1 over sine of x is between negative 1 and 1, right? This makes sense. And we decided to start with cosine of 1 over sine x because we're trying to uh, eventually get something that resembles our limit. So this is true so far. Haven't used any squeeze theorem yet. And let's try to multiply this by um, e to the x squared right? That should be fine. We'll multiply everything by e to the x squared. So this will be negative e to the x squared. This will be e to the x squared times cosine of 1 over sine of x. And this will be e to the x squared. And I want to point something out here is that remember when you're working with inequalities is that if we're multiplying things by a negative number versus a positive number that matters we have to change the inequality signs to reflect if we're multiplying by a positive or a negative number notice how the inequality signs did not change when we multiplied by e to the x squared this is because e to the x squared is always positive. The range of e to the x squared is always going to be positive, right? And you can think about that just looking at the graph of e to the x squared, right? It's going to look something of this sort, right? Rate of change will be a little bit different from just e to the x, but we know that it will always be positive, right? So that's fine. But now, this is where this question gets a little bit a little bit funky. So we're multiplying now by x because we want to have our inequality resemble the limit so we can then apply squeeze theorem. But x is approaching 0 in this limit, correct? So if we're approaching 0 from the right-hand side, well then x would be positive. If we're approaching 0 from the left-hand side, x will be negative. But we just said, doesn't multiplying by a positive versus a negative number, that's going to change the inequality, wouldn't it? And that's right, it will. So before we say this next step, we're going to assume that x is going to be greater than 0 for now. Okay, And then what we'll do is we'll actually assume that x is less than 0. So we're going to solve this essentially twice. That'll make a bit more sense once we go through here. So if x is greater than 0, then we don't have to change the sign of our limits, right? 
it's or it's, sorry the signs of our inequality it's all positive and we're left with simply just multiplying everything by x and this is what we have and now let's see if we can apply squeeze theorem so we will have the limit as x approaches 0. And remember, this is from the positive side because we said that x has got to be greater than 0 for this inequality to hold true. So we've got this negative x e to the x squared. Get the limit as x approaches 0. On the positive side, we've got x e to the x squared cosine of 1 over sine x. And finally, we have this. And now, let's see if we can use squeeze theorem. Okay, so Using squeeze theorem, we see, well, let's evaluate that limit on the left-hand side. Can we do that? Well, looks like we can, yeah. We would just get negative 0 times some number, right? Uh, well, e to the 0 would be uh, just 1, right? So we've got 0 times 1, so it's going to be 0. And the right-hand side will evaluate to the same thing, right? So let's just carry out our inequality. Lots of rewriting here. And we'll see that the right-hand side of this inequality is also going to be 0. So we can conclude that thus, what we've got in the middle of our inequality, right? this has got to be equal to 0 by squeeze theorem, right? Because if it's in between 0 and 0, then clearly the limit of what's in between those two has also, that has got to be equal to 0. So we kind of did it, but we didn't really look, because we've got the limit that as x approaches 0 from the positive values is equal to 0. But this question is asking for the limit as x approaches 0, right? That is not the same thing. The right-hand limit is not the same as saying the limit in general as x approaches 0, right? So we actually need to see that the limit as x approaches 0 from negative values has to also be equal to 0. So how would we do that? Well, if you look back at when we before we multiplied things by x, we assumed that x was greater than 0. Well, now let's try this question if x was less than 0. So let's try that. So let's assume that x is less than 0. Then we have, well, we know that we've got negative x e to the x squared. But we just multiplied our inequality by negative values, right? So this will now be switched, right? So this is now the greatest end. And it makes sense when you think about it because a negative va we've got negative 1 times negative x, right? And e to the x squared is always positive. So this will result in a positive number, right? So it makes sense that this is on the greatest side of our inequality, okay? Now we've got... Uh, x times e to the x squared cosine of 1 over sine x. And we're going to flip the sign again. And then we've got x times e to the x squared. Great. And it makes sense because that value should be negative in theory, right? So, okay, let's do the limit now 
as x approaches 0. And now remember x, we assume that it is less than 0. So we're approaching 0 from the left-hand side, right? From the negative values. x, oh, not x squared. We got e to the x squared. And now we're just simply carrying out all of the math, just rewriting the same thing, and we're adding the limits, right? There we are. Okay. And then the left hand side, well, we can evaluate that just like we evaluated the other ones. It's just going to be zero. Right? And then the limit in the middle is what we're hoping to apply squeeze theorem to. There we are. Perfect. And then the right hand side of our limit is, or sorry, the right hand side of the inequality, this will be equal to zero. Right? And that's just by plugging in and evaluating directly. So now we can say, again, using squeeze theorem, we can conclude that the limit that is in between these two equalities is being squeezed at that value 0, right? So that limit is going to be equal 0. So let me write that down. And we are left with this. And now the question is pretty much done, right? So we can just, we should just conclude our findings though. So we saw that the right hand side of the x approaches 0 limit, or sorry, the left hand side of the limit as x approaches 0 of that function is equal to 0. And we saw that the limit as x approaches 0 from the right hand side of that function is also going to be equal to 0. And if the left hand side limit and the right hand side limit are equal to each other, then the limit exists at that value as x approaches 0, right? And it will be equal to the same value as the left and right hand sides. So we can conclude that this is going to be equal to 0. So let's just write that down real quick. So I just put what we just said into some words, right? And this is really how you should end the question to make sure that it's clear that you've shown your understanding, right? We've got, since the limit as x approaches 0 from the left-hand side of x times e to the x squared cos of 1 over sine x is equal to the limit as x approaches 0 from the right-hand side of x times e to the x squared times cosine of 1 over sine x is equal to 0, then the limit as x approaches 0 of that function will also be equal to 0. And that's about it.